of you this is seven o'clock in the morning i wake up i quickly pack whatever it has to be packed i clean a bit of chain i oil now then i'm gonna ha go have a bit of breakfast because they already prepared for me here at the guest house which i'm staying and then i'm heading out This is the breakfast. I'm gonna eat quickly, have a cup of tea, and I'm out. Oh, such a strong black tea. Oh, stronger than the coffee. <laughs> mm. So, about today. Today is gonna be a ride of about 100 kilometers, but I don't believe it's gonna be possible because it's a very high climb in the mountains and the weather it's mm, it rained a bit in the morning, but now it's getting better. I mean in the morning around six o'clock I heard. Now it's getting better. eat and then out 10 minutes done I finally left Chayek like I said it was a bit of rain in the morning I feel a bit trashy because I couldn't really sleep I did not really enjoy this homestay where I stay now. I don't know, the kids were very noisy. Hell knows. The weather, cloudy. And quite chill outside, so... I have a, I'm gonna have a tough day, I guess. Anyway, let's see what this day is gonna bring. to turn right and head towards those mountains where is the Songku Lake. I have to say that I really hated this portion of 16 kilometers of asphalt and when I'm thinking that I have to cycle almost 200 at the end of the trip uh, I'm thinking about just taking a taxi. I don't want to drive, I mean drive, cycle to or between cars and traffic and I don't know, whatever, we'll see. I just stopped now to the last shop, probably, and now I enter again on Gravel Road and ahead of me in the mountains is the lake. It's about 90 kilometers from here. It's a long day and a huge climb. So let's see. I'm just worried about weather, nothing else. I'm just pushing like crazy on this oh, road. Oh. It's like not working at all. I stopped a bit because this guy told me if I want to jump in his truck, but no, I want to cycle. <laughs> Sorry for this. And man, he's like not going this road. He's like, I'm pushing continuously and he's not going. Anyway, let's say hi to this guy as well. <laughs> wow. <laughs> it's so incredible how slow I can cycle. I don't know why. Maybe it's also because I'm tired after so many days. I don't know. We'll see. That's slow, slow. This is the most craziest road ever been. It's like I can barely move. It's impossible. You can't see it like this, but it's bump after bump. And it's like you're pushing continuously. You're pushing continuously. It's, it's crazy. And all these trucks which are coming and they lift a lot of dust. It's like... Ugh. 
I hate it. I hate this road so much because it's like not moving. I keep repeating myself, I'm not moving, I'm not moving, but I'm moving, but hard. I cannot wait to approach mountains at least, you know, and to get out of this truck area because apparently in front there is a mine, it's a coal mine, and these trucks are uh, bringing coal from the mine to the, I don't know, whatever. So that's why it's like this, but it's terrible. It's terrible. This was the worst idea to come on this way. I still have a few kilometers until the mine, and then I hope it's gonna get better, but it was the worst idea ever. I have a moment of quietness because there is no truck. And I wanna show you the landscape, which is amazing, but it's such a pity that nobody, nobody around here, not even villages, because probably the same situation, too much industry. Approaching the mine area, and then I should be free of the trucks and dust. I cannot wait. And this is the Karakechi mine, or better say, the stress. This was the stress of the half of the day. 55 kilometers until here. Mostly dust, trucks. Ugly, 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 ugly. Coal from the mine. I've been waiting for this moment so much because I put some sunscreen on my face and it was the dust there. Ay, ay, ay. What did I do to myself with taking this route, honestly? Instead of just enjoying summer, I came here. What I like so far is that there it's cyclable. So I don't have to push, even if, but it looks like it's quite okay. So crazy. It can be such a nice valley, but the fact there are so many trucks and dust destroys everything. Otherwise, it's a nice landscape, but it's industrial. I'm not far away from the pass, maybe like one kilometer, and then we should have a nice view towards the lake Songkul, and then more 20 kilometers until where I supposed to find the yurts. But most probably they are there because uh, I was checking on internet and it looks like they are still there. Having a nice apple, and then we'll continue. Almost up, you can see the pass. And finally in the pass, Karakeche. Around 3,400 meters, somewhere like that. Now let's see what's the view. So this is the view from the pass. I can see a bit of the lake, still far away. Let me just stop and show you. So the lake, it's somewhere on the left hand side. Still a long way, but it's downhill, so it should be okay. Super. What a beautiful view from here, from the other side of the pass, which I just left a minute ago. Now you can see the lake. Still more 20 kilometers until the Yule camp. And I believe a storm will 
from soon but here will be definitely a snowstorm because it's very high this is around 3200 meters high and finally i arrive at the stone hole at mirlan merlan your camp where i'm gonna spend my night it was a crazy ride with 96 kilometers let's go and meet for the first time the yurts such a crazy day it started with i was almost crying because of the nerves seeing that road with the trucks and dust and everything and after 96 kilometers and 9 hours and 47 i arrived here at the songku lake uh, it's in the heart of the kyrgyzstan and I'm gonna spend the night here at the yurts. I hope so. Otherwise, I'll put a tent and that's it. But it should be okay. So I'm so curious. Let's go and see what we're gonna find there. Well, I guess it's a news which you don't wanna hear when you cycle 90 kilometers. They don't have any space available. And I'm gonna go to the other camp there to see if they have any space available. If they don't have a space, I have to put a tent and that's it. So it's nothing what I can do. So I'm gonna cycle the other side and see if I can find there any space. Finger crossed. To be honest, when I see the tent installed there, I already know that they don't have any space available. So <laughs> I don't wanna be in a tent tonight. Lucky me, I have a yurt. I can't wait to see how it's inside. It's so crazy. I can't believe I found the space. Even if it's quite expensive, I don't care because ah, this is incredible. I can't believe it. <laughs> this is gonna be heaven. Heaven and earth. I don't know even which bed to choose from, but look at this. So beautiful. There is a group of uh, German youngs, youngs here and they already invite me for some uh, vodka so <laughs> soon I'm gonna join them and then dinner and sleep but I want to check if they have here showers sometimes they have all kind of saunas and this so I'm gonna check if they have maybe maybe yeah. I'm not really sure if you can see something because maybe the light is not that strong but um, I'm not trying to change Oh, my lucky socks got broken, so I have to <laughs> abandon them. <clears throat> Nothing to do with them. Okay, we'll buy new ones from Narin tomorrow. Anyway, I still have mine. What can I say about today? It was a, it was a long ride, uh, more than, I mean, around 96, 97. I need to check my watch. It was an ugly valley with uh, all those trucks and dust and everything but then it was very beautiful so i'm really proud of me that i did it and now i'm just gonna go have a drink with these uh, german youngs then i'm gonna go and have dinner because i, I paid also for dinner and uh, then i'm gonna just maybe they have this type of saunas where you can just relax so I'm gonna do that as well but now I want to clean a little bit I don't like you know to take uh, clean clothes so that's what I'm doing now okay take the socks on Anyway, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna film too much because it's gonna be low light anyway. So um, I'll let you know when I'm back. I might take a small video with the dinner so you can see what's what's on the menu, and uh, or maybe even with the German. Anyway, I'll take you with me. So stay stay next to me because <laughs> uh, it's gonna be nice. This, this stinks. <laughs> this thing stinks. <laughs> Dinner is gonna be served in this yurt. <laughs> oh, let's see. 
stone. That looks nice. That's a nice place. Beautiful. Very nice. Thank you very much. Thank you. Such a nice place. And dinner is served. It's a kind of a soup with some meat, bread, jam. It's very nice. It smells very nice, this soup. Really. <laughs> very nice or maybe because I'm hungry I don't know but it's amazing I don't know what it is but <laughs> mm. perfect let me show you how it looks like noodles potatoes and some meat here okay. home home made bread I know how because they, they told me they always they do it in home uh, and some hot tea To be honest, I had such a good dinner. Uh, I'm not sure what was, whatever. But for me, I was hungry, so I needed to eat something. Now I finished, I'm gonna go out just to see all the young people here. And then I will go and jump in bed and sleep. It's enough for me. I'll show you some more. Yeah, and uh, I just spoke now with one guy. They will bring one German in my yurta because he got sick or something like this, saying he cannot sleep in the tent outside. So somebody to sleep with <laughs> just want to show you how crazy starts the weather to be I think it's gonna be a huge storm soon look at this incredible I guess it's time to say to you guys have a good night or good morning whatever you are uh, thank you once again for spending this time with me see you tomorrow and these are the condition at some cool at this hour it's nine o'clock in the evening, heavy snow, I can't believe it.